نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احل العقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر من احلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب سدنی علما اللہم انی اسألکا علما نافیا رزقا طیبا و عملا متتبلا اللہم الہمنا رشتا و عیزنا من شرور انفسنا اللہم ارن الحق حقا و رزقنا اتباعا اللہم ارن الباطل باطلا و رزقنا اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ اللہ is teaching them, guiding them, coaching them to be a perfect husband. Allah is ordering all Muslim husbands regarding their behavior, their mannerism, their attitude toward their wives. And there are so many sayings and ahadiths of the Prophet ﷺ which would help us understand the message of Ashiruhunna bil ma'roof. That Allah is asking the husbands to live with their wives in a very kind manner. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's hadith like Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Tirimzi that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Among Muslims, they are more perfect in faith who are perfect in morals. And the best of you are those who are best to their wives. Similarly, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her reports in Tirimzi that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Among Muslims, his faith is more perfect, whose behavior towards everyone is good. But the best is you who is loving and kind to his wife. And about himself, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's hadith, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her reports in Tirimzi that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Good among you are those who are good to their wives. And look, I, on my part, am very good to my wives. So there you are. If the Muslim men, they want to perfect their faith, then as a husband, they have to be kind, they have to be polite to their wives. Sayyidna Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Muslim that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his farewell sermon was heard saying, O people, fear Allah concerning your wives. You have taken them on the security of Allah as your wives and they have become lawful to you on his word and his commands. It is your right that you do not wish that someone comes and sits on your beds. If they commit that mistake, you may punish them in warning but not severely. And it is your responsibility to arrange for their food and clothing and necessities in a reasonable manner. So, fulfilling all the needs of the wife is the duty of the husband. Fending, fetching, providing, clothing, feeding, these are all the duties of the Muslim husband and these are the rights of a Muslim wife. Hazrat Haqim bin Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Ibn Majah that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Feed her what you eat and clothe her with what you wear. And do not give her a blow on your face and do not call her names and do not separate her to place any place other than your own house. So this is like teaching men all forms of kindness and love and all forms of politeness to the wife. And spending for the wife is basically the duty. All forms of economic commitments are. Providing for the wives' necessities of 
life is basically the duty of the husband and it is the right of a Muslim wife. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Muslim that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that anything that a husband spends on a wife is a virtue. And similarly, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu again reports in Muslim that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if a husband, that if a person spends a dinar in the way of Allah, a dinar in getting a slave released, a dinar as a charity to the poor, a dinar on your family, the last dinar is the best regarding reward in hereafter. So where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it obligatory and making it a duty for the husband to arrange for the economic requirements of the wife and it is make Allah is making all this as a right, a due religious right of the wife. At the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also promising a lot of reward for the husband who spends for the wife. Similarly, Allah says, uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith which is reported by Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who in Muslim that a Muslim, no believer, no Muslim husband should foster any grudge against his believer wife. And if she has a habit which is unacceptable to him, she might have other acceptable habits. So Quran and hadith are telling the husband to be forbearing, patient and tolerant towards the wife. Similarly, we see that there are so many other ahadiths in which the Prophet ﷺ has instructed the husbands to be nice and polite to the wife and to be not to be too strict and harsh. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Bukhari and Muslim that the Messenger of Allah said, O oh people, follow my advice concerning your wives. I charge you to treat your wives with kindness and love. Women have been created from the rib, and the rib is curved by nature, and the greatest curve is in the upper part of the rib. Before I proceed with uh, the rest of the words, I think I need to stop here, and uh, I would want all all my addressed audience my uh, my sisters my daughters to realize and to accept the crookedness of a woman's nature we have to accept that we have a crooked nature and we we cannot we should not say that we're going to get away by saying that this is how it is and i can't do much about it no this is not going to be like that we realize we accept that we have a crookedness in our nature and what we're going to do that we are try we're going to try to correct it and to eradicate it and to take it out of our temperament and out of our attitude so that the bond of love between our husband and as a husband and wife can glow and it can flourish and it can it can increase so the prophet said that woman has been created from the rib and the rib is curved by nature and the greatest curve is in the upper part of it. If you try to straighten the curved rib by force, it will break. And if you leave it alone and make no effort to correct it, it will remain curved forever. So follow my advice. This is the advice to, to the Muslim husbands. So follow my advice and treat your wives kindly and well. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is thus advising the husbands to avoid being harsh, hard, strict to the wives. And uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that do not try to straighten them or you will break them, break their hearts, break their emotions, or you might even break your relationship and you might even end up in breaking your house and your marital bond. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that uh, has a, in a hadith reported by Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Muslim, no believing man hates his believing wife. If there's a bad quality in her, there should be a good quality in her as well. So these were the words of uh, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
trying to explain it to the Muslim husbands, how they are supposed to relate with their wives. And then if we look at the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, how it explains Ashir Hunna Bil Maruf, we will see that Prophet وسلم, was most caring and loving and gentle and kind to his wives. Once the companions asked the Prophet وسلم, that who do you love the most? Prophet وسلم, said Aisha. Just imagine. Just just imagine. Does does any husband of today announce his love to his wife so vocally and so clearly declaring, announcing and accepting that his wife is his beloved? And then the companions said, the Prophet وسلم, we, we intended asking you from among the men folk, from the men companions. And the Prophet وسلم, again said, Aisha's father. Hardly any, hardly any husband of today would be saying something like that. And then Prophet وسلم, used to call Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha by a nickname by a pet name like he used to many times he used to call her Ash and Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her, she narrates so so many incidences in her life of uh, which would show and exhibit and demonstrate the way Prophet sallallahu dealt with her Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her reports in Bukhari and Muslim that she was a very young girl she was a young girl when she got married with the Prophet Sallallahu and she says that she used to play with the dolls even after the marriage and some of her friends used to play with her and uh, when the Prophet Sallallahu used to come to the house her friends they used to quit playing out of the respect of uh, the Prophet Sallallahu and they used to hide in the inner portions of the house but then Prophet Sallallahu used to uh, send them back to her he used to find them and they he used to send them back to her and then he used to ask them to play with Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and then they would resume playing with her just imagine how how tolerant how patient how caring how kind and how loving Similarly, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her reports and incidents, she says that I was sitting, I was playing with my toy and uh, Prophet sallallahu came and he asked Aisha, what is this? Hazrat Aisha said that I told him that this is my horse and Prophet sallallahu asked that what sort of a horse is this? It has wings. So, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her said that, okay, well, it, it, there's nothing queer about it because Hazrat Suleiman's horse also had wings. Just imagine Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with all his commitments how busy he was as the head of the state of Medina as the army chief of Medina as the chief justice of Medina like so many revolutions so many so many battles to be fought and so much of dawa so much of tabligh to be done and there with all those commitments and all his busy schedule of life he had all the time in the world and then coming down to the level of a teenager girl conversing interacting giving time Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her reports in another incident in Abu Dawud. She says, then uh, there was an, an occasion that I was accompanying the Messenger of Allah on uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on a journey and uh, we ran a race and I won because she says that I was very light and I was very young. And afterwards, when I had grown slightly heavier and bulkier and fatter, we again ran a race and we competed with each other. And this time, the Prophet Sallallahu went and then the Prophet Sallallahu remarked, now we quit. So, so you see what friendship and what frankness and what a beautiful exemplary relationship between the husband and the wife. Then the Prophet ﷺ was like showing a sport to Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her reports in Bukhari and Muslim. She says that uh, the Abyssinians were having a sport of lancing in the mosque. And to show it to me, the Prophet ﷺ stood at the door of my apartment, which opened in the mosque, using his mental as a screen for me. And I watched the game through the, sp uh, through the space between his shoulder and his ear. 
and she says that the messenger of allah or, uh, messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he kept on standing for my sake till i felt that i had seen enough of it and i retired and she added you can imagine from this that what was the place of a young and a fun loving girl this is really surprising how much time how much attention how much care is being extended to the wives of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with such a busy schedule and then hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha narrates her incidences there so many any other incidences which she narrates and uh, then she says that there was an incident in the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's life in which my my head used to be in the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's lap and uh, his head used to be in my lap and uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to be um, he used to when his head was in my lap he used there were times when he was asleep and there were times when he used to be reciting the quran and hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala and her was pressing his head and there were times when she used to be combing his hair and oiling his hair and then there were incidents when hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala and her had headache and her head was in the lap of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he was stroking her hair and he was rubbing her forehead and he was saying that oh aisha i love you if you die in my life i shall bathe you i shall clothe you in the coffin with my own hands and i shall offer funeral prayer for you and i shall low down in your grave myself this is the intimacy and this is the love and this is the closeness which all these incidents are very clearly highlighting and explaining to us and then the incidents of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a uh, occasion when we see that hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha narrates that uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, was at the place of a wife's house and another wife came um, cooked something and sent to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the other house and uh, when the slave who came with the plate of food this uh, wife in which uh, in whose house the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was staying she got annoyed and she threw the plate away and she threw the food away no scolding no getting upset and no losing of temper prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sitting on the floor he was picking up the food he was picking up the utensil and he replaced the utensil and he addressed the people and he said that your mother got envied this is the tolerance this is the forbearance this is the patience this is the soft heartedness of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the incidents are not just with hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha there are occasions when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was uh, relating even with the other wives as well hazrat safiya radhiyallahu ta'ala anha came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once and she was crying and uh, what did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam do what do, what do the normal husbands do when they find their wife crying normally we hear sentences like we heard words like i hate to see you cry stop all this nonsense put off get off with this this drama and get off with this nonsense but prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was there wiping her tears asking the reason why she was upset he was consoling her he was advising and suggesting her the solution to her problems prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked her the reason and she said that the wives were uh, what woke up were comparing herself to the, with themselves and they were labeling her as the daughter of a Jew and she was upset because of that so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam smiled while he was wiping off the tears and he said that oh uh, safia you should have told them you should have just told them that musa alaihi salam was my father harun alaihi salam was my paternal uncle and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is my husband so how come you are one up that how how can you claim that you are superior to me so you see all this love and attention and kindness we can continuously see in all these occasions and then i suppose one of the most 
beautiful incidents is narrated in Bukhari when a wife of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was traveling with him and uh, she was riding a camel and the women of those period when they were riding the camel they used to sit in the compartments which were kept on the camel's back and a person the driver was uh, driving the camel so fast that the compartment on the top of the camel was like badly jolting from the right to the left and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he called on the person oh andrash who you to who be on to you don't you see that there are glass crystals in the compartments so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he labeled his wives like glass crystals this is the care this is the softness this is the kindness this is the mercy which we like which we learn from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sunnah and for us Quran says in surah ahzab laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasanatun and there is to sure the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a model of excellence for you